sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. We have a look. It was one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But what about the camera that captured the leap? The camera that gave humanity its first ever image of another world. Today, we are going to be talking about the camera that took the very first images on the moon. Photos that became some of the most iconic images in human history. And I'm gonna start right now. On the 20th of July 1969, the Apollo 11 mission changed our understanding of what humanity could achieve. As Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stepped onto the lunar surface for the very first time, another piece of equipment was just as critical in documenting their historic moment. This was no ordinary camera. To withstand the harsh conditions of space and on the moon's surface, it had to be customized to perfection. The camera used on the Apollo 11 mission was a Hasselblad data camera, specifically designed and modified for the mission. Hasselblad cameras were already renowned for their precision and durability, making them NASA's choice for documenting space exploration. Hasselblad and NASA's journey together began in 1962 during the Mercury program. Prospective NASA astronaut and photography enthusiast Walter Shearer had his own Hasselblad 500C with a Planter 80mm f2.8 lens. Knowing the high quality of the Hasselblad camera, Shearer suggested to NASA that they use Hasselblad to document all future space missions. After NASA brought their first few Hasselblad 500Cs, a weight loss program followed, including the removal of the leather covering, the shutter, the reflex mirror, and the viewfinder. Astronauts couldn't use one while wearing their space helmets. Instead, they relied on presets, settings, and training. A new film magazine was constructed in order to allow the camera to hold up to 70 exposures instead of the usual 12. And finally, a matte black outer paint job minimized reflections in the window of the orbiter. This streamlined Hasselblad would find itself in the payload of the Mercury 8 mission in October of 1962. The successful high quality images that Shura captured across his six orbits of the Earth would spark a new chapter in the history of Hasselblad and a long and close mutually beneficial cooperation between the American Space Agency and the Swedish camera manufacturer. As NASA's photo department grew rapidly, contact with the Swedish camera manufacturer broadened. In turn, Hasselblad modified and refined its camera to make it even more suitable for space use, experimenting with different constructions and different lenses. Between 1962 and 1969, NASA was determined to cut every single gram from their payload, meaning that the Hasselblads on board were forced to be as lightweight and as lean as possible, but still maintain the famous Hasselblad quality. The Hasselblads were designed to work seamlessly with astronaut suits and gloves. Its operation was simple yet effective and the images that the astronauts took with the boxy black Hasselblads have become true classics. And the moments that they captured were not just inspiring, they were historic. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. During the Gemini 4 mission in 1965, for example, the very first spacewalk was made, and with Hasselblad in hand, James A. McDivitt took a series of pictures of his spacewalking colleague, Edward H. White. People were surprised over the amazing sharpness of these photos produced by these Hasselblads. Most people probably didn't give too much thought into the demand that space travel made upon the cameras and their reliability. The cameras had to work perfectly under the most trying and extreme environments, over 120 degrees C in the sun and minus 65 degrees C in the shade, 
not to mention the lack of gravity and the myriad of unknown hazards. And the cameras had to work with absolute consistency. Each and every shot was a historic treasure, a once in a lifetime opportunity that would never be able to be captured again. And time and time again, Hasselblad met up to the challenge. Which leads us to the historic mission of Apollo 11, which can only be deemed as one of the most historic moments in human history. Armstrong is on the moon. Neil Armstrong standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. When the Apollo 11 mission successfully landed the Eagle on the moon on the 20th of July, 1969, signifying humanity's first step off our own planet, a silver Hasselblad data camera fitted with a Zeiss 60mm f5.6 lens was chosen to document the lunar surface and attached to astronaut Armstrong's chest. A second black Hasselblad electric camera with a Zeiss 80mm f2.8 lens was used to shoot from inside the Eagle lunar module. The Hasselblad electric camera had never been tested in space before, adding to the pressure of a once in a lifetime moment. But would the Hasselblad camera used to shoot the lunar surface capture the results that everyone was hoping for? Working perfectly under extreme conditions of the lunar surface, the Hasselblad electric camera produced some of history's most iconic photos. Think about it, this camera captured images like the famous footprint, the Earth rising over the moon's horizon, and humanity's first step on another world. These photos became some of the most iconic photos in human history. The Hasselblad data camera didn't return to Earth. To save weight for the journey home, it was left behind on the lunar surface, one of many artifacts of our first steps on the moon. A total of 12 camera bodies and lenses were left behind on the lunar surface. Only the film magazines containing the momentous images were brought back. The resulting photographs captured the history of humanity in the making. These images were not only documenting a milestone for humanity, but also inspiring generations to dream beyond the stars. So the next time you see the iconic Apollo 11 photos, remember the unassuming hero that made it possible. A camera that bridged the gap between the Earth and the Moon, between dreams and reality. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Today, as we gear up to return to the moon with NASA's Artemis program, you might be wondering, are they going to be using Hasselblad again? NASA's Artemis 3 mission is slated to be launched in September of 2026, sending four astronauts to the moon's south polar region. They are going to be using modified Nikon Z9 cameras with a custom viewfinder, new and improved video capabilities, and a custom Nikon lens. This Nikon camera will be the very first mirrorless handheld camera to be used on the moon, designed to capture imagery in a low light environment. But prior to the Artemis mission, this camera is going to be tested on the International Space Station to demonstrate its capabilities and to work out any imperfections before the historic return to the moon's surface. Let's just hope all the photos will be in focus. Thank you to all of my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.